Welcome to Stories of Your Stuff. I'm Eric Cheever, a curator at the Stearns History Museum. And today we're going to be talking about an artifact from the Cold Spring Brewing Company in Cold Spring, Minnesota. So Greg, you're a collector of Cold Spring brewery items, is that correct? That is correct. Um, I have, sort of have a basement bar here full of Cold Spring beer memorabilia, uh, anywhere from Tin signs that may be hung on the on the outside of a bar or cans, some bottles, anything from that to old cardboard cases that were really never meant to be saved, but somehow survived time. Um, I do have one item here that I'm a little confused about as far as where it came from or what it was used for. Um, sort of got some brackets on the bottom. It's made at an angle. I've, I've just never seen it before. Never seen photos of it. Just curious as to what it may have been used for back in the day. So I was kind of hoping that the museum might have some answers for me. Excellent. Well, we're gonna we're gonna see what we can find out. I would appreciate that. That'd All right. Very good. We'll we'll get back to you. So it looks like we have our work cut out for us. Um, so this is the sign. As you can see, it's uh, probably like uh, oh, about three sixteenths aluminum, and then the uh, probably probably handmade, and the, uh, the 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 font had been applied over the aluminum plate. And if we roll it over, well, first of all, you can see that it's at an angle. And if you roll it over, you can see that the brackets have been, have been uh, welded on. And it's apparently been well used because they've been repaired multiple times. So some of the welds are, are pretty substantial. You know, this, this has been around, this has seen, this has seen use. Um, it's also got on the back, it's, it's definitely been repainted. This is not the original paint. If you look on the back, you can see areas of the original paint underneath the repaint um, that, are, that are cracked and weathered. So, so it's been around. If we look underneath the brackets, we can see that they're curved, um, with holes. And there is paint, both green and black paint, stuck to the bottom of the brackets. So it looks like it had been on multiple applications, one green, obviously, and one black. So, using our deductive reasoning, we can, we can jump to the, the idea, possible, the possible idea, that this is a truck top. It looks like the curve would fit the top of the cab of a 1950s truck, because this, is, this, this dates from, a, judging from the font, this dates from approximately 1950 to 1955. 56 in that ballpark when they, they started to phase this what we call a Coca-Cola font out for a block font. Um, so it would fit right in that, that, that time period. Um, how are we going to approach this problem? Well, we're going to run down to the research center and see if we can find a photo of a Cold Spring delivery truck that has one of these fixed to the top. The Cold Spring Brewing Company began operations in 1874. The location that was chosen had been in use for years as a stop-off point on the Red River Trail due to its abundant supply of freshwater springs. The brewery remained a small producer until John Oster took over in 1890. Soon he and his two partners expanded the operation until it ranked as the 12th largest brewery in the state. Following Prohibition, the company began to struggle. An executive from Coca-Cola Myron Johnson, was hired to help improve the firm's fortunes, which he did in spades. Johnson quickly bought out the previous owners and embarked on a major expansion program. 
that brought Cold Spring Beer into nine states and turned the company into a very successful regional brewer. This piece dates from around 1950, right when Johnson was pushing Cold Spring hard to increase market share. In 1946-47, he redesigned the logo, freely borrowing ideas from his old employer, which is why we call this the Coca-Cola font. This logo remained in use from 1947 until approximately 1957-58 when it was phased out and replaced by a more modern mid-century label. So the first thing we're going to do is search the photo catalog in the research center here and see if we can find any clues. Come this way. We poured over hundreds of pictures, brewery photos, and lots of street scenes from in and around the Cold Spring area. We discovered, much to our dismay, that brewery delivery trucks were not top on the list of subjects for aspiring photographers. Hope was waning, until, there it is. Tough to see in this reproduction, but there is a picture of a Cold Spring box truck circa 1954 with a very similar aluminum cutout affixed to the box front. To reaffirm our hunch, we consulted archivist John Decker, who grew up in Cold Spring and remembered seeing these signs on the cabs of the trucks. So, John, uh, you know, we were, we've been looking for this sign. Yep. Um, the, the theory was that this, is a, this sign, which, which we've seen, was used as a truck topper mm -hmm. um, on top of Cold Spring delivery trucks in the early 50s. It's, yep. got, it's got the Cold Spring font which would date it from approximately 1950 through the 1950s until they changed in the late 50s to the, the block font. Yep. Um, so that's the theory. And after pouring through hundreds of photos of Cold Spring Brewery parking lots, pictures of downtown Cold Spring and surrounding uh, communities, I was able to find a picture of a Cold Spring delivery truck circa 1954. You found one. We found one. And if you look very closely, and we will show this, we have what oh, yeah. looks to be a very similar sign attached to the front of that delivery truck. I've seen one of those before, but that was a long time ago. And you, you have actually, you do remember seeing them? Sure. So yeah, they, the trucks used to run around Cold Spring, and yeah, they used to come right out of the brewery, and mm -hmm. that's where they're supposed to come from. So, okay. um, yeah, I remember those as a kid. Uh, Living down by the Grand Company, and also when we moved up by the ballpark, they were running around. They'd be biking around, or walking, or getting into trouble. So I'd see these trucks, certainly by the bars in particular. Yes, yeah, so. yeah. We 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 have identified this, or you have, is it in front of um, Gresser's Auto back in 1954, correct? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, it's yeah. I don't know. I think there was there was even a bar back then. Eh? Who knows, they might have been fixing up on the truck too. Or so. perhaps the driver was shopping for a new Fraser Kaiser. There Fraser you go. Fraser. That's right, good yeah. progressors, sure. Yeah, and so. Well, excellent. So you, we may be barking up the right tree on this. I think you are on the right path. Excellent. So there you are. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. And there we have it. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time. And keep sending us pictures of your stuff.